Nothing bothers me quite as much as somebody who really thinks they're a big shot, but they actually have no power or influence or any sort of meaning. But it makes it extra delicious when those people who think they're a big shot get just a little bit of comeuppance and realize how powerless they are and how vulnerable they are to everyone turning against them. And that's exactly the story surrounding Marjorie Taylor Greene today, because on the one hand, her and people like Matt Gates have been bragging to the media that if the Republicans take back control in 2022, not only are they going to get revenge on Democrats, but they're going to control the GOP. They're going to be the bosses. They're going to be the ones in charge. But it turns out that that's probably not going to happen because Marjorie Taylor Greene and her husband just got rocked by a major scandal that absolutely tears apart her entire MAGA credibility and shows her through this brand new investigation under the hood into the marriage of Green and her husband that she doesn't practice what she preaches and people they're starting to get a little angry. So first I want to talk a bit about this because Green went out into the media with her pal Matt Gates. Imagine being friends with either Green or Gates. Imagine those people being friends. I wonder which of the two is the biggest loser. But they're bragging openly about how they have Kevin McCarthy on a leash. It says representatives Gates and Green gloated that they have control over California representative and House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy. If Republicans take back the House in this year's midterm elections as political political analysts expect, Gates and Greens and other members of the so-called MAGA squad could have undue influence in who becomes the next speaker. This, Gates and Green said in their article, means McCarthy needs to curry favor with them if he hopes to become speaker. Green is forthright about the fact that she expects to have some leverage over McCarthy if he seeks the speakership, and she intends to make the most of it, the author of that article, Molly Ball, wrote it. Whoever wants to be the next speaker, Green tells me, is going to have to earn her backing and that of her allies. And then it goes on the Gates saying much the same thing. But let's be crystal clear. While it is true that up until now, Marjorie has sort of reflected a type of Republican that's in that Trump world, her power has been diminished. Remember that she's gotten into very public fights with people like Lauren Boebert. And it does seem like Boebert has been kept more in the inner circle than Green, that she's already been pushed aside a little bit. We talked about that time where there's this big event and Boebert was invited and Trump was invited and all the other big Republican names are there, but Green wasn't invited, showing that even within the Trump circle, she might not be nearly as influential. And remember, she tried to make, make this massive campaign to target Senate Republicans like Lindsey Graham, who were supporting even the mildest of gun reforms, and they told her basically to F off and didn't take her threat seriously. Green has showed herself to be weak, and now she's far weaker, and the MAGA base is pissed because it turns out that her and her husband have been making big investments into companies that she supposedly hates because they're all woke. It says Marjorie Taylor Greene's husband, Perry Greene, just bought up to $295,000 worth of stock in companies that have predominantly and openly supported social efforts that the Republican Congresswoman vehemently opposes, such as the Black Lives Matter and LGBTQ rights movement. Perry Greene on June 10 purchased four or five figures worth of stock in Costco, Goldman Sachs, Home Depot, Intel, Nestle, Procter & Gamble, UPS, Visa, and other companies, according to a finance first personal financial disclosure Marjorie Taylor Greene filed on June 20th with the House of Representatives. She's called the Black Lives Matter movement the strongest terror threat in the country. In May, Marjorie Taylor Greene also popped complained that straight people would become extinct because of the LGBTQ movement. Probably in about four or five generations, no one will be straight anymore. Everyone will either be gay or trans or non-conforming or whatever, and to the list of 50 or 60 different options they are. Green's statements stand in stark contrast to statements made by the companies in which her husband has now invested. Following the murder of George Floyd, UPS spent millions in its foundation to help Black Lives Matter, and they said Black Lives Matter to us, they matter to Nestle, the global giant said in a message from its executive leadership team. We must focus on how much Black Lives Matter and what we can do to make real and lasting changes to end social injustice and racial inequality. Visa Chairman
Chairman Al Kelly said in January 2020. If Marjorie is telling the truth that she is a true champion for MAGA values and that BLM is a risk to American society and LGBTQ people in their movement are a risk to the future of children and all of that, if she really believed that and actually was America first champion, then her and her husband wouldn't make these investments. In this case, it's just her husband, but make no mistake that in the past, Green herself has made some of these investments. And while she says she doesn't choose what investment she makes, she leaves that to an independent advisor. She could have easily said to him, yes, don't tell me the nitty gritty every single day, but also don't invest in anything that opposes my values. Green is in big trouble here. Maybe not legally. She seems to have disclosed this all, but this really deep dive investigation into her husband and into her shows that she's a massive America last hypocrite and the MAGAs, they're going to roast her for it.